Hello everyone and welcome to the new and improved track guides. First up is Lego Majore and we're looking at the GP layout here. Obviously this is a fictional circuit, however it is based in a real location. Let's have a look at some of the key statistics for this circuit. So as you can see, real location is based in Italy and it has a total length there of 5.8 kilometers or 3.6 miles. Now it has a lot of corners on this circuit, 17 corners on this GP layout, uh, with the longest straight there being 800 meters. In terms of elevation change, there is 74 meters in terms of lowest to the height of the circuit. As you can see, sector one has just flashed up there. We are going to look at each individual sector. Sector one, very much a handling sector there. Um, so, you know, we've got the short left hander, the hairpin, lots of 90 degree corners in there. So handling cars should be very good in that sector. What we're then going to do is look at the next sector, Sector 2, which is highlighted in pink right there for you. This is more of where cars with a lot of downforce, very good in terms of high-speed corners, are going to excel here. We have the sharp right-hander initially, but then we have the flowing S's through the circuit there as we then end up on the longer straight on the circuit, which is 800 meters in length, which is when top-end cars are then going to come in on that straight and where Slipstream plays into account. As you can see now, highlighted in green is set to three. So you're going to go into a large braking zone into that hairpin. We then have a sweeping left and right there. That's all power based that sector. So if you've got a very strong car in terms of acceleration, you will excel in that sector. And then finally, we have sector four, of course, which is about to be highlighted there in blue for you. Uh, and this is more of like the same as sector two. So more about mid corner speed. If you've got downforce in there, you should be able to handle this part of the circuit very well. So lots and lots of information for you there. But without further ado, rather than me give you lots of statistics, let's actually jump into a lap now and let me show you some of the key markers and points and areas of the circuit where you can potentially make moves or just improve that overall lap time. So like any lap, you're going to want a decent start to the lap. So first of all, come across and really try and cut this left-hander. We'll talk about this left-hander later on because obviously it's the last corner on the circuit. Make sure you don't run too far wide. And what I'm going to do as we cross the start finish line, I'm going to slow the pace down this video a lot. And we're going to go through each corner individually looking for these brake markers. So as you approach turn one, it's a sharp 90 degree left hander. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just going to pause it right here, okay? So there's several markers here you can use. First of all, you have the 100 meter board. There's a 50 meter board later on if you have supreme braking or supreme grip. But what you can also use is on the left hand side. So you have the pit wall. Now I often use this in road cars. End of the pit wall there, I start braking. You also have the blue van. Now I am actually using the blue van in this situation with the Audi TT Cup car at Major AGP. I use the blue van. It's the perfect, perfect, perfect brake marker. So a couple of key pointers there that you can use to brake. And you're going to want to brake early here. It's very common for people to break too late and go really deep into this corner, which then compromises the hairpin of turn two. So as you can see here, the 50 meter board coming up. So that's where if you've got Supreme Grip, use that. You can see straight line braking initially, and then I'm starting to point the car towards the corner here. You really want to use all this curb as much as you can. It really is beneficial to do this. Be careful if it's a very light car though, it will chuck you off a little bit. You want to be in the middle of the road for this turn two. Now you're probably wondering where to brake for turn two. There's not that many markers here. But there is one, and if you haven't spotted it yet, you're about to be highlighted it because it's that white little tip on the right hand side of on the grass there. At the end of that, if you break and turn in, you have a consistent, consistent brake marker for turn two. And with turn two in this hairpin, you always want to stay really, really, really tight. Really tight, because if you're not if you don't do that, people are gonna dive up your inside and take those positions away from you. So as you can see here, we're gonna come in and stay really tight. I say you'll get dived into overtaken if you do not keep tight on this corner i use the curb you can even go on the yellow stuff there you will not lose any grip from doing that be careful on exit on this corner if you've got a rear wheel drive car you may experience a lot of oversteer i'm in an ff car at the moment so i'm experiencing a lot of understeer i'm really going to the edge of that corner there you don't have to do that just be careful because if you touch that grass you may go spinning for this left-hander, it is fairly flat out. You may have to lift a little bit here. There's no real reference points. You potentially could use that white crossover line there. But other than that, it's more of just a judgment base. Turn in, try and use the curb to your advantage uh, as we come round and head towards turn four. As you can see, I've stayed really tight here. I've lifted off the throttle there just to make sure the car turns because I'm in an FF car. Right, we're just going to stop it here. Now, you're probably wondering where the brake marker is for this corner. And I used to struggle with this constantly. In fact, the cones used to help me. Without any cones, I struggled. But there is one marker here, and I've started using it, and it's actually a really good marker. 
On the right hand side is a barrier colour change. Now I've always referenced barrier colour changes, they're very useful uh, for everybody. It goes from orange to green, that is exactly what I use for turn number four. It's just a dab of the brakes, chuck the car in and then happy days through the corner. So there is a little sneaky tip for you, that little colour change there is very good for this corner turn number four in Majore GP. So as you come through here, you can cut this corner a lot. Sometimes if track limits are on, you can't cut it. I have seen a lot of people go very, very like way over the curb here. I'm just going to keep it standard here. If you can hook your tire on the inside of that curb, you potentially get a little bit more turning, uh, but sometimes it can bounce you off. So just be careful of that. In terms of the exit, you can run over that curb as well. I see plenty of times people going onto that tarmac area. Your tyres will get dirty if you do go onto that, so just be careful of running onto that area there. Now, we're just speeding up here, heading towards turn number five here. Just slowing it down now. If you're very slow on the brakes or very bad on the brakes, use that white marker there. However, I'm going to stop it right here because this is where the key braking marker is in most cars, and it's one I use all the time. There's actually two here. So first of all, the obvious one is the grey little trim down the left-hand side of the circuit there. So the end of that, use that as a braking marker, and you're going to have to straighten up your braking a little bit to get a good braking, because if you just slam on 100%, you're going to understeer off. Now the second one, and this is one I use in this car, is actually a piece of uh, darkened tarmac, essentially, and you can see it right in the centre of your screen there. And it's more clear, actually, when you're actually in the game. But basically, that's a lot darker than everything around it and a very good marker. And I use that as a braking marker for this corner. And generally speaking, for this corner, you're going to slam on the brakes initially and then trail brake in towards the curb. And you'll be running very close to that white line on the outside. If you struggle with understeer, make sure you brake and turn a little bit more. And before you go 100% brake, turn towards the corner a bit more. But they're the two brake markers I use on this corner. As I say, the grey one is the obvious one. The little bit of darkened tarmac in front of you is actually the secret one that I actually use. And I hit the brakes bang on where I said I would. And I'm going to straight line the braking first of all, 100% braking. And then you're going to see me start to trail brake. There's a lot of bad habits for this corner. A lot of people go too deep and therefore run a bit a uh, bit too wide there. You want to actually clip this curb, even go over it a little bit, it'll drag you around, and then try and keep it in the middle of the circuit. Another bad habit a lot of people have is they run too far wide, and it risks them going onto the grass, or the really slippery yellow stuff there. It's not good. The tighter you can do this, but then maintain full throttle, you actually gain a lot of time in a lot of cars. Something to think about when you are on a fast lap. Now, if you get a good run through here, you may have a run on somebody. Otherwise, be careful of somebody trying to go for a run on you into this next corner. Now, as we approach this next corner, again, there's very few brake markers you can actually use here. But there are some available to you. And I'm just going to stop it here. And uh, first of all, there's an obvious one there. There's the grey tarmac on the right side or the red if you want to use the red because it's more highlighted for you right there. However, the one I actually use is neither of those. It's the actual blackened curb that you can see right there. Now, I judge the corner based on that. So if I see it, I can dab my brakes, chuck the car in, and I should be fine to make the corner. Now, the next corner, you do actually want to do quite tight to give yourself a nice lovely run through the rest of the S's. So it's flat out the entirety all the way in, until the hairpin at the end of the long straight, which I talked about earlier. It's a really long straight. And, you know, if you can get a big run up to that point, you're going to maintain a huge speed on anybody else and potentially give yourself another overtaking opportunity. As I say, they're the brake markers for this corner, though. And as I say, I use the one on the curb. I find it a little bit better. It's on in my eye line. Um, you don't really ever want to look right if you're turning left because then you're not looking at the corner. You're looking for a marker. But if it's straight on, it's in my peripheral vision and I can use that. So I hit the brakes there. Some people will say use the end of the curb. I don't because I find a lot of the time you go too deep for this corner. This is critical here. You'll notice I go over to that sort of brown area there. There's a bit of grip there. Use it. Really, really use it. Now, this is a critical factor. I need to be flat out now throughout the rest of this section. The more I can be flat out, the quicker I'll do the straight and the quicker this overall lap would be. Now, I'm just going to stop it here because this is critical. You'll notice I'm cutting this corner quite a lot. And the reason for doing that is because you want to straight line the next corner to give yourself a nice run. The more you cut this, it's slightly banked, the more you'll get around the corner and then it'll give you a nice line for the left. And as I said earlier, the, f the more you can do it flat out, the quicker you'll be overall. Now, the problem with this is that if you cut it too much, you'll get a penalty. Now, the penalty is actually after the curb. I believe it's after the grey little trim there because I've been on that grey trim and as long as I'm on that grey trim, 
it's normally fine. It's very close in terms of the line, so the more you cut it, you have to be careful. The less you cut it, the slower you'll be throughout this entire sector. So if you can cut it more, quicker lap, but risk of penalties. The less you cut it, no risk of penalties, but you'll be a lot slower. Think about that when you're doing your laps, maybe in a race you don't want to cut it, but in the time trial or qualifying, you might want to cut it to make sure you get the supreme position either on the leaderboard or on the grid for the race. So you're going to see now, look, I straight line this bit and I'm straight lining it towards that corner because now the car is balanced. I can chuck it left. I cut this corner as well as much as I possibly can. I've gone to fifth early to stop understeer. As you'll see, I still run out fairly wide. A lot of cars will run out wide. If you run too wide, you're going to touch the grass and you're going to go into the barrier. So you have to be careful of that. A light, slight lift may be necessary, but it's worthwhile doing rather than crashing. Coming through here, it should be fine really. I don't expect anyone really to run wide there. And we're just going to flat out this now towards turn number 11, the hairpin. This is a big, big corner. Big, big corner. I'll slow it down here. You don't really use a 100 meter board. However, you are using some of these brake markers I'm about to point out here at turn 11. So there are four markers here. There are four markers and you're probably going, is there? I can maybe spot one or two, but there are four. So the first one, obviously, is the flag marker. You can see that there, the black flag marker right there. That is a perfect one, one I use quite often. There on the left-hand side is very much in your peripheral vision, very easy to use. The second one is the 50-meter board, very obvious as well, right in the center of your screen, one to use there as well. The third is the end of the green wall which is just below that and a bit further than the 50 meter board. Again, a very nice, very handy for you to use. And finally, the fourth one is actually the sign on the right hand side. That's even further along and another one to use. Potentially you're going for an overtaking move. You need an extra brake marker. That sign is in a perfect place as well to use. You could argue the tree as well if you need to look at the right hand side, but they're the four main ones I use. So the uh, flag marker, the 50 meter board, the end of the green wall, and the sign on the right hand side. So maybe some that you didn't know about there, some that you potentially can use here. But in terms of this corner, very critical corner. So when you break, a lot of people go too deep for this corner. You actually want to break a little bit early and really use the banking to your advantage so you can accelerate out the corner. Most cars, you want to break earlier and chuck it in. The problem is in a race, if someone's on your inside, you either have to break really early and try and go for a cutback, or you're gonna to have to try and break really late and go around the outside, which is possible. However, a little bit more risky. So as you can see now, I'm going to hit the brakes there. Around the brake markers I mentioned, you're going to see me start to turn towards the corner. And that's so I can get use of the banking here because I can do more with the tyres because the banking is going to help me around. Now you can see I'm straight onto the throttle there. I'm just balancing it a little bit. That's what you're going to have to do in any car. And just be careful of the exit here. It's very easy to go into that gravel and lose all the speed you've just gained from going through that corner. As you can see, I'm on the very limit of the curb there. Now, if you're in a rear-wheel drive car, you touch that gravel, you're spinning to the right-hand side, into that barrier. I've seen that many times. However, in this situation, we're in a front-wheel drive car, it would just slow you down just that tiny little bit. We accelerate up here, nothing really major here. But as we get towards this slight right-hander, there's no markers here. What you're going to have to do is just judge it accordingly. So, look for the apex, aim for that apex. It's normally flat out in most cars. So there's no brake markers. However, be careful on exit. It's very easy to understate into that barrier and look how close it is to the, the circuit. It's very close. I have seen many times people go into that barrier, bounce back onto the circuit and all carnage happen. It really is quite a scary corner. Now, as we approach this braking zone, you notice on the right hand side, there's that metal uh, post there. Now, I don't use that as a brake marker. That indicates to me I'm approaching my brake marker. Something in my peripheral vision to use as an advantage. Now, as we get to this corner, straight away in front of you, you can see the black mark on the curbs. That is potentially one brake marker. If you're going exceptionally fast or in a very fast car, you can use that. But what we're going to do, we're going to advance a little bit further on to where I break. So I break just after this and just show you a couple more markers, which you can't visibly see on screen at the moment, which are actually of use as well. So we'll just continue on here and you can see I'm about to jump on the brakes there and we have a few more brake markers here just for you to look at and just to identify potentially on the car you're using. Obviously with the Audi TT I'm going very fast so my brake marker is actually a little bit earlier than potentially where I would normally do it. However, there's three here. There's a slight, slight mark on the curb there right in front of me there. That's a brake marker numero uno. We then also have the 50 meter board on the left hand side, always very useful very useful indeed uh, and then just ahead of that you also have a bigger longer black mark on the curb there 
They're the three I normally use. You potentially in your peripheral vision might want to use the trees, but I've never really found them that useful. Uh, but that's just something that you might want to use. However, they're the three break markers I do normally use. So you can see I've broken between two of them. So they're my markers. So I see the first one, which I flagged previously, and I go, okay, well, I need to break in a second, and then I break just before the second one, uh, and then I can approach this corner accordingly. Now, with this corner, it's very much a trail-breaking corner, and you actually want to turn in slightly later. And similar to turn number six, I think it was, uh, there's lots of brown astroturfy sort of um, brown stuff on the inside there, like a hard material. It has, actually has a lot of grip, very much do use this. It will help you massively get around the corner. Now, this corner, turn 14 and turn 15, is very much like Spoon at Suzuka. It's sort of like an apex to then run out, to then turn back in. And it's, a, it's actually quite a constant corner. The problem with this corner is, is after turn 15 into turn 16, that all flows as well. So you have to get this part of the corner right in order to get the rest of the section right. And this last sector can gain you a lot of time but it can also lose you a lot of time, especially if you're in dirty air. This corner does become a real struggle really, really fast. Here we go, full on the brakes initially, and then you're going to see me just roll off the brakes a little bit here, trail brake towards the corner, scrub off any additional speed I need to. I'm letting the car roll a little bit. I'm trying to maintain a decent apex speed there, slightly on the throttle. And as I said, this is very similar to Spoon at Suzuka. Accelerate all the way out to the exit. That curb goes very wide. It's then going to shrink and come back to us, uh, and then I'm going to stop it right here. So if you have to brake in any car for this next corner, you can accelerate a bit further on because you'll be able to turn a little bit more. And what you're going to do is you're going to brake at the end of the curve. That is your brake marker there. It's right in the center of your screen. It'll be slightly to the left, obviously, if you're a bit more to the right. However, that is your brake marker. You'll dab the brake and chuck the car in. Now, for turn 15, very much similar to some of the other corners I've described, if you can get your wheel on the inside of the curb, the curb will drag you around a little bit more, give you that little bit more turning that you can't necessarily get from the car. Now, if you do that, it will help you very much for turn 16 because that's the opposite corner. We're going around the right-hander here. We then go into a left. Now, if you can straighten that up and get into the left, especially in a rear-wheel drive car, it will stabilize you so, so much. Now, if you don't get it hooked up there, you have two problems. First of all, you're going to understeer towards turn 16. And if you understeer so much so you leave the track, you're going to get a penalty. That's obviously going to ruin your lap or ruin your race. If you're in a rear-wheel drive car and you understeer and you really try and you know turn hard, overturn the car, there's potential you'll touch the grass. And what will happen is the car will just really spike oversteer. It'll just snap oversteer and you'll spin off towards the right-hand side. So it's kind of critical if you can get the right turn in here. You have to make sure the car stays balanced. So in the TT, for example, in this lap, uh, I'm actually not braking at all. I'm going to let the weight transition of the car and the fact that the car is being loaded uh, already as I went through turn 14. I'm just going to keep that rotation going round and the car should eventually turn in towards the curb. We continue on through the corner now. You see I'm lifting off. I did a tiny little bit of brake in there. That's just to try and slow the car down a little bit. And you can see I'm going to try and get it hooked on the curb. I don't quite do it this time, but you can see how it's a little bit raised there, the curb on the very edge. So you can get your tiny caught in that it's really good it gets you the turning you want you can see i understeer a little bit wide there if you're in a rear wheel drive car i'd be currently spinning towards the right hand side of the circuit if i understeered any more i was getting a penalty in turn 16. what we're going to do now is it's flat out now towards turn 17. now this is one of the hardest corners on the circuit i would say very hard to judge because of the last sector there that we just talked about you could be carrying a lot more speed than you normally do you could be carrying a lot less very hard to judge this last corner but I'm going to stop it here and I'm going to just talk you through some of the breaking points here first of all and I'll talk to you about the corner. So the first one is there's a very, very, very dark patch on the curb that I will highlight there. And that is what I use first of all for this corner. It's very hard to spot. So if somebody's on there, you can't use it. So I have two more markers that I use. I've got the 50 meter board on the right hand side. But as I said earlier, looking to the right on a left hand corner is not good because your head's pointing one way and the car will want to go the other. Normally, you look where you want to go because that's where the car will eventually go. What you can do is use the end of the curb. Now, especially if you've got a very good handling car, the end of the curb is perfect. You can turn it in. The only thing you've got to be careful with if you use that is that you don't brake and then touch the grass because you'll instantly spin out. They're the brake markers I use here. You potentially could use a sign on the left-hand side. It's not something I have used, really, if I'm honest, uh, but it is there and available to you. 
Now, in terms of turn 17, as I say, it's very hard to judge because depending on how you do turn 15 and 16 or 14, 15, 16, will depend on where you break for turn 17. You carry too much speed into turn 17 and break in the same point, you're going to run deep. Don't carry enough speed, you're going to turn in too early, potentially incur a penalty. So you're going to have to judge your braking accordingly and you may initially brake hard and then release it very quickly and let the car roll through the corner. That's a standard thing to do if you're a little bit unsure. You can cut a lot of the curb on the inside. There's a huge amount of it on the inside of turn 17 and it's very worthwhile doing if you can do that because it's very easy to run wide on turn 17. Because it's downhill, you gain a lot of speed very fast. So a lot of cars tend to understeer towards the exit. Now there is some tarmac for a different layout on the exit there, but that's actually dirty. So if you do touch that, you're gonna start understeering and the barrier comes towards the track very quickly and there's a potential you could hit it. So here is, it's better to be very cautious than to go out on out straight into here because if you understeer off, you're gonna ruin your next lap or you're gonna crash into a barrier. And rather than uh, you know do that, be a bit more cautious, slam on the brakes initially, roll off them, let the car roll through the corner, and when you believe it's safe to accelerate, then accelerate. So here we go, you can see I come on the brakes, I'm then trailer braking, trying to judge the speed accordingly, I'm then slowly getting down towards zero, it's 5% zero, there we go, look at that, I'm using all that curb, you're allowed to do that, and then I'm really, really confident I can make this corner now, so I go flat out. If I wasn't confident, I'd have to lift. As I say, if you go any more towards the right, if you go on that tarmac there, you're going to get very dirty tyres, and very quickly you can see that fence coming towards me there. Uh, I see a lot of people understeering into that barrier. Sometimes it will bounce off that, come on circuit, and again, all sorts of carnage is going to happen. That's a very detailed lap guide in the Ultimate Track Guide series, essentially, of Majore GP. What you are going to do now is I'm going to show you the Rank 1 EMEA record that I got the other day at this circuit in this car uh, and just go through the brake markers again just to prove I do use these. So we're accelerating across the line, head towards turn one, we're using the van on the left hand side, brake, dropping down the gears here, using all that kerb on the left. We're a bit too far over here, we're going to have to keep it tight as I say, use the yellow and the kerb there, we accelerate out the corner, we don't use as much of the track as we did in the guide, we then come across there and then we chuck it in here. Trying to use the left as much as possible. We're going to break on the barrier change there as we do. Chuck it in. Try and get on the curb on the inside. Try to break through the corner. Don't use the exit tarmac on the left here in this car. Some other cars it's worthwhile using. Heading down towards this right-hander now. We're going to break on the darkened tarmac, as I've said earlier. Break there. Drop down to third gear. Try and chuck it in. Just miss the curb there. You see they get an advantage there. But because they've run too wide, we can pull it back here. As I say, it's better to be a bit more on the inside. Going up to here, again, the darkened on the curb there. Chuck it in, try and use the brown stuff on the left, accelerate through the corner. Try and look at how much we use there. That's what I mean with that turn seven. Use as much of that corner as you can, the curb, even the gray bit there, because you gain so much. I've absolutely behind me there. You can see I've gained so much on this ghost here. Accelerating down towards the hairpin. Remember, we've got the black flag marker. We've got the 50 meter board, the end of the green wall. We're actually going to break just before the 50 meter board here. We're going to break, drop it towards third gear, chuck it in, let the car rotate through the corner, accelerate very quickly there. And um, we're three temps up. So this was an absolute stonking lap, to be fair. Um, we don't do the last sector as good as expected, but even so, we accelerate through here. We're going to chuck it up to fifth gear. Try and not touch the grass there. You'll lose a little bit of speed. Don't understeer into the barrier. Again, we've got a load of brake markers here. We've got the grey there. We break in between the two brake markers, as I said. Trail braking, using that brown stuff on the right side. We then get to the second part here. Tiny little break in there. Just ran too deep there. You can see I carried too much speed. Understeered very much close to running off there as we continue towards the last corner now. Very hard corner to judge. We understeered here, so we misjudged it slightly. Try and bring it back. Accelerate through the corner. Accelerate on. Oh, you can see we're understeering a little bit there. And we accelerate towards the line. So this lap is a 2015. You can see we're three temps up. We lost two temps in that last sector there. You can see that on our optimum on the right hand side. So a potential of 0.3. I actually think a 0.2 is probably possible in the Audi TT um, if you nailed it. But even so, I take that lap, you know, rank one in EMEA. What I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to show you a couple of overtaking places at the circuit to really give you that full track guide experience of Majora GP. So, you know, give you the best places to overtake, best places to make moves which would be successful. Now, in terms of overtaking spots, there's three corners, really. Three primary corners that you can overtake on. You can overtake on other corners, of course. You know, you don't. there's, there's no prescription or prescribed way of overtaking, uh, but in terms of corners where you'll most likely see overtakes, 
there are three. First of all, turn one. So you've got Adam in front here, looking to try and get past Alexoni in the Volkswagen. Just struggling with front tyre wear, same as myself. So turn one, you're going to see Adam show his nose here. Now it's very common for a move to happen into this corner, but Adam actually backs out of this at the very last second there, so I have to you know back out a little bit. Koki goes for an unusual move here, round the outside. You've got to be careful of doing that. Koki obviously had trust in me that uh, I would see him on my radar, so Koke goes past there, but dives into turn one like Adam was looking at are very common here. Now you're going to see Adam actually dive into this next turn, this right hander. This is very uncommon. Uh, he gets it done though, so fair play to Adam. Uh, but then we're going to see the conventional overtaking spot in terms of turn number five. Now if you're on the inside here at turn number five, usually the person on the outside will give it up. Uh, but Koke goes for the move here, down the inside, gets it stopped. Alex only goes for a cut back, but going to struggle with acceleration there. But that is a very, very standard overtake there. Turn number five, get on the inside, and you will more than likely have it. You will see dives into that corner as well, so do be careful of people diving into that corner. If they dive there, you're going to have to keep a very good eye on your radar. If you get knocked out wide, that's a problem. People can dive and make apexes, you know, it's not against the rules. It's against the rules if they dive and completely miss the apex and just fire you off. That is just bad driving. But diving and making the apex is absolutely fine. There is one other overtaking spot though, and we're coming up to it. I'm just going to change the clips over. So you can see here, we are stuck right behind Alex Oni here. So right behind, we're in a really good prime position here. We need to nail this right-hander, which we do. So we're going to have a good run through the left. And you can see Alex Oni just had to let off a little bit more there because he got it slightly wrong. But we're going to have a good run on Alex Oni here. And this is the final corner where you're going to see a standard overtake. There's three corners, turn one, turn five, and this hairpin here. So we get a good run on Alex Oni here. Alex Oni knows it's probably coming here. So we go towards the inside. We're going to break a tiny bit later. Turn it in, chuck it in, happy days, job done. What you will occasionally see is people go for a cutback. So you can see Alex Oni is right on my bumper now. Some people will go for a cutback uh, in order to try and get the move done. But then they've got to go around the outside and it's a left-hander. Very hard to do. It is possible, don't get me wrong, it's very possible because people do outbreak themselves into that hairpin. Uh, but in this situation, um, I keep the position for now. That's going to be it in terms of this Lego Majore GP track guide. I hope you've enjoyed this ultimate track guide. Uh, very detailed, showing you a few overtaking spots there, turn one, turn five, uh, and the hairpin there. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in other track guides in the future. Thanks very much again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.